we get hit by objects all the time. They're always they hitting us. Okay? I mean, yeah. if you look at the moon, it's just one big ball hit by craters, you know? We yeah. just, we're just lucky that we have an atmosphere that uh, that slows them down or breaks them up. But, um, yeah, the there's... Thing was, the thing is, though, is if you remove the atmosphere, if you remove all of, like the, like, the fauna and all the plant life and just have Earth, the Earth would look like the moon. Yeah, it would. That's that's the crazy thing about it. You just can't see it. Yeah, because I saw, it's all buried. I was watching this um, this video recently. You know, getting my information off the of the school of YouTube, <laughs> and yeah. um, there's there were nine huge, um, big ass uh, rocks in in our solar system that could actually, and I'm not sure to what degree this is true, but that could actually shatter uh, the planet. I wouldn't be surprised, and I bet you there's bigger ones too. Yeah, there must and be. That, right? those are like that's just those are just the ones we know about, right? Because here's the thing: when when Chelyabinsk got hit, they were watching a meteor go by. It. Oh, so is that the one that. of the dash cams? Yes. Ah, okay. Yeah, they were watching this one go by us, and then we got hit from behind from a little fragment following next to it. Mm. And uh, if the first one had hit, that would have been real bad. That would, would not have been very good. But here's the thing, though: you can't just go shouting to people. Yeah, we are. We're, we get you know bullets coming by us all the time. People would freak freak out. Well, I'm sure people will freak out. But here's the thing: does that mean we just plug our ears, close our eyes, and ignore it until we get hit? I think that to be extremely stupid. <laughs> Absolutely not. So. And this also comes like the argument of like, oh, we need to like, why are we studying space so much? Whereas, you know, we haven't discovered the oceans yet. Well, here's the thing. You're not going to go to the oceans to escape a cataclysmic event. The only way to escape the next cataclysmic event to take place on this planet is to leave. Go somewhere else. Hmm. And who's to say that at some point, some kind of civilization hadn't done that in the past? Yeah. Um, I mean, we already say there's life out there. Okay, there's life in the universe somewhere else. We, there's no physical possible way that we are the only in life to have existed in the planet or in, in, the, in the universe. I don't believe that at all. Me. Then the question is, has these extraterrestrial beings gain, achieved the capability of coming to us from deep space? Well, I agree with people that that's probably extremely very unlikely for them to be able to find us to begin with, just to find us, then make that, that uh, travel. And then, but if you have the, if we kind of kick the box out the room for a moment that everybody's been thinking inside of for a while, if technological advanced civilizations have existed before and have left the planet to escape these cycles of cataclysm and have returned periodically to coming back down, that sounds a lot like these myths that, we've been, that have been passed down for thousands of years of these beings and gods coming out of the sky to restart civilization quite literally, like in the ancient Sumerian cuneiform writings talking about the gods bringing the plow and showing them how to build is that is that the anunnaki or is that something else yes that that that's that would be the anunnaki yes um so these meteors that we're talking about this is the torrid meteor stream right yes um could you mind um just j what is it in general so the torrid meteor stream is the fragmented tail of an ancient giant comet that has passed by the sun many times. And at each pass, as let me explain a comet real quick for people who don't know. A comet is like this massive dirty snowball out way far out in space that gets kicked into the inner solar system by some kind of gravitational pull or push, whatever you want to call it. Okay. And as it gets closer to the sun, the ice and gas begins to to what's the word I'm looking for? Defragment? The ice basically starts to melt and crack and fall off, and it, it outbursts, and it begins to let go of all of its material in this big, long tail behind it, and then it loops around the sun, and it just does that again and again and again, and all this debris that it's been releasing this whole time get, gets turned into this dense, like, cylinder of material wrapping around the sun, and our Earth's orbit passes through that cylinder twice a year. And that's when you can see the meteor showers in, oh, what October, is it? October, early November. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. The yep. reason why, the reason why that's significant is why, is because in October, what's in October for us in here in America, 
Halloween. Or in other places, the Day of the Dead. Why is right. this the Day of the Dead? November okay? 2nd, Mexico. Um, man, I, I, I got to brush up on this again. But there's a bunch of like, of like, not myths, I forget the word I'm looking for, but like symbols within like folklore and stuff like that. For example, the one that comes off the top of my head, I'm not positive this is correct, but the witch's broom. Like the witch is flying in the sky. Okay. Well, the broom in some places is symbolized is a symbol for a comet, the tail of a broom oh. coming out, coming out the end and like it coming out of the sky and brings, you know, destruction and disease and stuff like that. There's better examples than that one. But that's the one off, I can think of off the top of my head. But the day of the dead is in October is because one day in October, everything died. That's, that's the only way to explain why that's that day, in in my opinion. And you go back and look, and all these impacts that happened, for example, Tunguska, it didn't happen in October, but it happened here in June, on the opposite side of that same meteor stream is when Tunguska hit us. And, uh, yeah, Graham Hancock explains it like this. You have a highway, and you just walk across it willy-nilly with a blindfold on, every, every, like, twice a day, Okay. And some points, like it's, it's at a lot of points, there's just nothing in the highway at all. You're just walking, doing nothing. And sometimes a motorcycle goes by. Sometimes a car goes by. Sometimes several cars go by. And sometimes it's heavy traffic with huge trucks. And you just keep walking. And you're just lucky enough not to get hit as often as you probably should get hit. But we do get hit. We do. And we've gotten hit several times. And not enough people have woken up going, oh, did you hear that big blast that just happened over top of Russia? No. Yeah, that was big. Yeah, it. Uh, I think when did that happen? Like nineteen, somewhere in the nineteen hundreds. Tunguska happened in nineteen oh eight. Nineteen oh eight, and there's. Re sorry, go ahead. And there's still like uh, a place where nothing grows. You know where the where the impact crater is. Yeah, at the center, basically the crater, the center where the air blast hit. Because Tunguska, the object never hit the ground. It exploded yeah. in the atmosphere into all these fragments. So a massive object never hit the ground, but the shock wave, the center point of the shock wave, where it hit the ground, nothing grows there now. Yeah, and it's just this, this circle of no trees. The trees are just flat like hay that got run over by a car. It's insane, yeah, the, those pictures. Really back then. old photographs and whatnot, and the video taken by, like, uh, I forget the dude's name. Uh, it'll be in my video when I put it out. But the guy who actually got to, and here's the thing. When the event happened in, two, in 1908, but they didn't actually be able to get to the site until 18 or 1927. Uh -oh. So several years went by before they actually showed up to take the pictures you, you see. Huh. And what you see is that just these decimated forests where these trees were just knocked down like toothpicks from this massive concussion blast that came out of the atmosphere from a huge object. Dude, the object was huge. 110,000 tons going 33,000 miles per hour, creating a blast 184 times the size of the Hiroshima nuclear bomb going off. 44,000 <laughs> oh, degrees Fahrenheit. I forget the exact number in Celsius right now, but that is big. That's fucking frightening. Jesus Christ. That's amazing. And it never hit the ground. That's the crazy thing. And here's the thing, though. The reason why it didn't hit the ground is because the material it was made out of is what they think. Because we still don't technically know the type of material. But normally when an object explodes the atmosphere like that, it's usually just like a really shallow space. Or not shallow. Really like spongy space rock. Let's put it that way. There's not a real like ump to it. But the object – do you know about the, uh, the Arizona crater? Uh, it, it rings crater. a slight bell. Yeah, there's this big – if you can't look it up to get a picture, it's this huge crater in the Arizona desert. I forget the exact width of it. But the same size object as Tunguska created that crater. The only difference is that that object was iron. Huh. It was like a bullet coming into the atmosphere. It just punched oh. right through it and hit the ground and just made this huge hole in the ground. Oh, that's so you, nice. you could fit the Washington Monument in it. Like from from like base of it to its top, it's it's super deep. Yeah, I think I've seen pictures of it before. Yeah, it's frightening knowing that there's just rocks that can kill a city, just like that. Yeah, 